Bill Bell. <laughs> part, part of my problem, Bill, is I come from a journalism background. Right, right. So, yeah. Okay, we need a motion to reconvene. Uh, Dr. Pivoy, motion to reconvene. All in favor? Thank you. All right. So, uh, Councillor Bangry, maybe you want to add uh, your your idea to the conversation under 9C. Trying to I, I, was, I was wondering if it would not be advantageous to us to set up a, a meeting right with the minister right in Edmonton uh, instead of trying to get him at AMA and whatever and take Jeff and a couple of members of council of the mayor and meet right with the minister. And my, my suggestion is that if we don't get a positive response out of this meeting next week, that that's exactly what should happen next okay. week. But I did, just so you know, I tried to get the meeting with the minister. He said he's not taking any appointments at AUMA. That's what his staff told me. Okay. Then so. for discussion, I would like to, or whatever you do, I'd like to make that uh, a point on the minutes. Re recommendation? Yeah, recommendation. Okay, recommendation that on the... After meeting with the, with the staff of our transportation, if we're not satisfied with what we hear, then we set up an appointment with the minister right in Edmonton in his office. Should we have the minister of municipalities assisting us? That For might be a good idea too. We have, it, it's, just to say, it's kind of a two-edged sword, you know, on one hand they're trying to encourage us to do something and then on the other hand we got a roadblock, yeah, right? Good. So we need to somehow... Well, if we have two of those together, it, it's, Mayor Cronin, I think that's an excellent idea to have both ministers <coughs> and both the Is that a possibility? We can request. We can request. I don't know that they'll grant that, but we can take. Okay. All right. Or we should meet also one right after another. another. We should Point taken. We should also, if we meet with the minister, we should invite our MLA to attend as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. All right. That's good. Now, uh, 9D, uh, Councillor Balfour, thank you very much. You went to this training, and you uh, gave us your report. There is a lot of interesting points there. I know you're going to present at the Economic Development uh, Board. And uh, do you want to say a couple of things regarding um, this item? I, oh. I think I've put... It's explanatory. The notes are pretty self-explanatory. Yes. I'm, I'm happy to address or answer any questions that any other members of council might have in regards to it. Uh, the biggest things that jumped out to me was in trying to that I, I that came that I thought were really important was basically the issue of our economic development board having a really good direction on where we as a council want them to be going. Um, so, okay. yes. so uh, am I correct in assuming that after all of this, event-based tourism mm. is the biggest suggestion Absolutely. and perhaps something that we as a council yeah. should really support. If we're looking at using tourism to attract people to town, event-based tourism is the way that works. Yeah. Yeah. So. so maybe we can read that, understand it, and when we'll have a retreat, kind of look at those points and bring them back at the table. Would that be fine? Yeah. That's okay, right. thank you. Uh, 9E. Uh, Professor Balfour may want to speak a little bit to that. I'm happy to see a positive result to all our efforts. Mayor, back to this uh, economic development. Would it be would it be <coughs> worth our while to invite our economic development committee to that portion of our our uh, retreat? retreat? I don't know that uh, we would want to have a committee there. I don't know if that would be very effective. We've got representatives on council uh, that are there representing council's views on what we'd like to see happen there. Councillor Balfour is the one that will take some of the recommendation that we have coming out of the planning session back to the economic development. When they do their planning, they will have to take all direction 
and adapt them into their planning. Correct. And, and, correct. and Jeff, Jeff's there as well. So I, I think we have the information going back and forth that way. Jeff attends that meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we have administration and council view, which is good. Yeah. All right. So maybe if you want to give us a quick update on uh, uh, waste management. Yes. Um, from our last meeting, we, we had some ideas of what we wanted to see happen. Um, we pretty much got that as far as we, I'm just trying to, we end up with exactly what we wanted at the end of the day. Some of that just came through today uh, where we got notice that people, there's lots of emails and phone calls going back and forth and we got notice today that, uh, it was today, that uh, we're not getting everything that we wanted up front initially. We're not getting real strong, yeah, they're going to let us go over 10%. But the uh, authority did make a motion not to proceed with trying to go to the higher approval process, which was the big issue that we were worried about, uh, because that would cost significant amounts of money and tie our hands, depending on what the best practices uh, report comes back with. So. Basically, we're in a waiting mode right now. We figure we've got about a week's worth of garbage left. Uh, we're the garbage from the eastern part of the area is going directly to Lethbridge. Uh, the costs incurred in doing that are just basically the tipping fee is the only additional cost to it. And uh, hoping that we don't have to start shipping it to Cali because that's fairly expensive, but that may be the direction we end up having to go. To. Yeah. Thank you. And I saw a little bit of your financial reporting, which was encouraging. All right. Let's go to 10. Any questions for administration regarding anything so far? Are we good? Are we good? All right. Let's go to 9-11. There is uh, some in your packet, two letters. One protect from the Alberta government. One for protecting Albertans from future floods. <coughs> this one is a very important uh, piece of direction to the town when we are approving development. Mayor Cronin. Yes. <coughs> Can I ask a question on that? Please. Uh, with the uh, Atkins proposal down be uh, below the golf course. Is the town totally out of that process <coughs> with uh, uh, any kind of recourse? Okay. There are certain requirements that are asked of Mr. Atkins to proceed with this development and be able to get the approval to do so. One is to show the mapping of the floodways and the mapping of the flood fringe. Before, uh, if we don't obtain that, we cannot approve the subdivision. Mm -hmm. It would be unwise to do so. Just for clarification, the subdivision has been approved with conditions. We okay. have not, he has not met all of those conditions <coughs> yet, and so we're working through that process with him. One of the conditions is that we've required the identification of that because there may be undevelopable land in that subdivision. We also need to know uh, regarding some loss of land due to erosion, what's happening to our utilities, roadways, and the impact it would have. <coughs> so how, how soon will we have that report? Um, we met with him about two weeks ago at the latest meeting, and he has assured us he will provide all the documentation we've requested. Um, when I'll receive that, I don't know. Thank you. The other uh, document... Oh, there's uh, one more question. Sorry. Who, uh, who identifies the floodways? Is that us as a municipality yeah. or is that the province? A there was a study done by the province in the late 90s and it is recorded as such and it, there may be some changes to that and I believe they're going to update those studies. But obviously, we will not be the priority area. Um, it's going to be the areas that were heavily impacted this spring. 
Um, I remember. So, so but that's all the that's all the data we have to go on to date. So it is a study that was commissioned by the province. I believe it was in ninety seven ish, ninety five, ninety seven. And then uh, just a follow up question: Is it possible that this Bill Twenty Seven can limit future developments that in our area? Potential. Yes. But we have never allowed development in floodways. Right. Okay. And that we've taken that position some time ago. Um, and even in flood fringe areas, we we have required um, some flood damage construction. Flood damage control mitigation, or mitigation um, <coughs> flood prevention measures in the development of that land. So uh, um, that's, we've kind of already taken that position with the flood risk. Is that the case? I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that area that that um, on the south end of town there by Scalville there uh, wasn't that kind of at one time in the the floodplain there's, area? Well, Has that been there's floodplain, there's different definitions, right? So floodway and flood fringe can be in the floodplain. Okay? Yeah. So looking at it from floodway is where you are going to be impacted, yes. no question. Yes. Flood fringe is, there's potential because, the, I mean, from probably Second Street up in Cardston is probably in some yeah. danger of being flooded because of the nature of the creek, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the way the mapping sits is it's very specific as to the one in 100 year events and where the floodway would be, where the flood mm -hmm. fringe would be. When, um, in 75 they did some remediation <coughs> from the golf course towards, through town. They dredged out that because we had that big flood. Really? And then they dredged that area have they ever done any research to see how the flooding since then has impacted that? Is it still um, at the same levels or, or is it filled in with silt? And as I said, stuff? the last study done for the town was in the late 90s and I don't have the exact data. I can't pull that out of my head. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure they used some data at that time. Dredging is not a practice anymore because of the harm to the environment. Fish habitat, and yeah. we we actually have sculpin in the creek, yeah. which, which? Is sculpin, sculpin it's called, which is an endangered species, which causes us additional um, grief, I'll say, <laughs> when we need to work in the creeks. So, um, yeah, if we think we're going to be able to dredge the creek again, it's not. No. <laughs> All right. So, let's so, and just one last thing, and this is just more for information purposes. I, we experienced this when I was living down in Arizona. We had a, a situation where, to protect us, uh, they made a, a, a similar effort, and they ended up widening the flood, identified flood areas, and cut off just ultimately millions upon millions of dollars of future growth for the community we lived in. Uh, by one sweep of a pen stroke, you know. They just whoop, widened those flood areas and just totally devastated our community um, where we could. So anyway, I just we need to be cautious. Things like Bill 27, that redefine, you know, the the terminology and what uh, what areas and acreages get affected um, can very easily bite us in the future. Well, so, we want to be cautious, no doubt. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to the last piece. Thank you, uh, Mr. Behrens. Uh, Chief, the Alberta Center. Okay, you have, first of all, the Alberta Foods Community Families First with New Art. So mm -hmm. this is something for your information. And then Alberta Center for Injury Control and Research is regarding uh, Seniors Falls Prevention Month. That will send some uh, some pamphlets, brochures, posters to the town, and we can we can forward that to Councillor Barnes, can't we? He's a senior citizen, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we can, we can uh, advertise. I put them on a bulletin. Okay. Yeah, we've distributed those to our SCSS group. Good. 
All right, so at this point we need to uh, have a motion to go in camera. Councillor Edmonds moved to go in camera. It's not going to take very long.